Hey, let's delve deeper in our lesson uh, number 28 in the book of Revelation. Now, throughout our study, I've been suggesting that we understand God's wrath in a very certain way. God, with extreme prejudice, is against anything or anyone who would harm one of his children, anything or anyone opposed to his plan of redemption. And you know what? There's no gladness in this justice, the setting things right when his creation, the people that he made, are intensely suffering. He's not happy with that. It's heart breaking justice for God. Now consider what the scriptures reveal. Ezekiel 18, 23. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, and not rather that he should turn from his way and live? Or Ezekiel 33, 11. As I live, declares the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die? Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. First Timothy 2, 3 through 4. It is pleasing in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And yet, in Revelation 16, 19, John describes this justice as God's raging anger. And, and you might also read the fierceness of his wrath from the King James Version, the fury of his wrath in the NIV, his fierce anger in the Holman Bible, or, or his terrible anger in the New Century Version. 1 John 4, 7 reminds us that God is love. And when we understand that allowing evil to go unchecked would be unloving, I think we begin to grasp the heart of God. The emphasis here is not on God feeling rage, but rather on the devastating effects of persistently rejecting his love and choosing evil. You know, when we examine that original language, that Greek word, orgy, it can mean righteous indignation, not this feeling of an outburst of temper. So in context, this anger is a deep and unwavering opposition to evil. Now, friends, when these apocalyptic times come, make sure you're standing on the right side of God's opposition to evil. Hebrews 10, 31, it's a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of the living God.